needed box in ham radio. This is the most hated box in ham radio. If you didn't know before about this box, you probably understand why people don't like it now. If you didn't know before about this box, you probably understand why people don't like it now. So today on the ham radio crash course, I will show you the simplex repeater by Argent Systems. So today on the ham radio crash course, I will show you the simplex repeater by Argent Systems. This nondescript little black box, which works off of two AA batteries or accepts a pretty wide voltage uh, from 4 to 28 volt DC, runs off a 12 volt battery without any problem, is a simplex repeater. For those that don't know, and I'm going to explain what this means, I can plug this into a handheld radio using one or more of the accessory cables that you can buy. And it will, on whatever frequency is set to, listen when it hears something break squelch. It will record that thing and then play it back with like a second or two of delay. That's a, a rudimentary simplex repeater. This goes way beyond that capability. But people hate these things because if you live in an area where you have like a really popular simplex calling frequency, like we do here in Southern California, if somebody sets up one of these, it is going to drive people nuts because everything anyone says is going to be then repeated again back out to everybody. The legality of this device is not really legal in the capacity of it being a simplex repeater. I am not using it as a simplex repeater. So for everybody that's like, you're doing something illegal, I'm not running it as a simplex repeater. There are good reasons to use a simplex repeater though. And that would be if you're working with a friend or a buddy or you have friends, neighbors, family in a, in a town away and you maybe have a hill between you and you can't do line of sight comms. Well, hypothetically, you could have this connected to a solar system, put it on the top of that mountain with an HT with a simple antenna, and then that would be brokering the contact between each of you. And it would be simplex, meaning one frequency, which would mean that you wouldn't have to have a complex repeater system or a full duplex repeater system. You just have to have discipline to wait for you to get the signal and then, you know, wait a second, transmit back. The other party has to wait for them to get the, the... so it, it slows down the whole, the whole discussion, right? If you're trying to go back and forth quickly, but uh, it totally works in a pinch. Now, this is the Argent Data Systems ADS-SR1 simplex repeater and voice recorder. I know, simplex repeater, you're, you just got done saying, Josh, that it's, this is possibly illegal, you can't use it, et cetera, et cetera. This goes way beyond that. Uh, what this actually can do in addition is run a voicemail box. So you can set this up to actually be a voice recorder on any frequency of the radio that's connected to it. And so yeah, you can record all the data locally. This particular model has over a thousand minutes of audio that it can save. To do that though, I had to pay for an upgrade that brought this over $80 to get it. The standard version only can do like a hundred or something minutes of audio recording. But how I use it is in its bulletin system. With bulletin system, I can have this connected to an HT and then using another HT in the field, I can send it a DTMF tone. That DTMF tone will tell this device, oh, play audio recording one or play audio recording two. And then it will transmit via my little HT that previously recorded audio track. You can also use this as just a ever so often uh, intermittent audio player for pre-recorded messages, which is kind of nice. Now, there are many simplex repeaters on the market. This one, however, is kind of like the high-end version of simplex repeaters. And the reason I got it was because of that broadcast functionality. All right, so let's take a look at this. So this is the Argent box here, and I paid for the accessory cables. I got the Kenwood slash Baofeng and the Yesu, the uh, tip ring ring sleeve connector that you can use with the Yesus. The box itself is really straightforward. Here's your DC plug, 
This is your connection for the radio. You have an on off switch and pretty much nothing else. There's a battery door and if you could see it way down in there, there's a set of dip switches. So the primary function for the dip switches is audio level on higher, audio level on higher. So even bumping the audio more. Dip switch three resets everything back to normal. And then four is PTT slash mic PTT combined. So this is again, depending on the radio you're giving it. The manual is something you're gonna have to make uh, fairly close friends with because it's literally how you control the radio. This is all done via DTMF tone. You can turn it on and off. You can do an auto time off timer or basically set what the timeout timer is for transmission. There is a repeater cooldown setting and control for audio level and gain. When using a Baofeng and Kenwood radios, I have not had to mess with most of these. I just turn the repeater on for testing if I want to do that. I set security code. That's something that I control so that nobody can get into the simplex repeater when I'm running it because I do run this with the simplex feature off. I don't want people to be able to use this as a simplex repeater for reasons that I'll continue to talk about as we go along. And then into the message recording area. Now this I do use. So here I record messages and play back a message. It's as simple as holding down the PTT button, pound, pound, two, one, and it'll play the announcement in slot one and you can have up to nine announcements. So it's, it's really straightforward in how it works. You can set this to have an announcement interval, meaning set a given message to play every so often, which is kind of nice. Now, if you are trying to use this close to legally, you would need to have a voice ID or some kind of ID turned on so that it would play your call sign so you wouldn't be illegally transmitting with this. And if you're not physically there, that's kind of the problem with this is if you put this on a mountaintop, for instance, and then you set it up to ID, well, that's great, but you're on the same frequency and it's going to cause interference for those that are also listening there. That's one of the reason why typical duplex repeaters are so much nicer is because they don't interfere with each other. Now, if you wanna do a CW ID, this is where you would set the codes for it. Now for voicemail, <laughs> this, this is its own kind of funky thing. Obviously you can turn it off and on. There's an access code, which you would set the access code that can access the different mailboxes, not necessarily just you being the quote unquote admin of this thing or the operator control op. You would set this to whomever would be able to check messages. So the biggest, the biggest part of this device is, is the voicemail. There's a whole chapter devoted to it. And you can basically kind of use it if you're familiar with packet radio and how you have messages. It's almost like that, but in audio format. So you go through play message, previous message, repeat, next message, erase message, and then exit voicemail retrieval. So it's literally like using DTMF codes to control a, an answering machine, like back in the 80s and 90s type of answering machine, which is, which is pretty funny. You do need the access code to be able to do it. And if you forget, you will have to reset the dip switches for it, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Um, all in all, it's incredibly simple to use, which is kind of scary because, you know, people are going to obviously be interested in this thing. It, it gives you way more control than you're actually really going to need to just play messages or put it in a simplex mode. It's really, really simple. And if the audio is too low, then you use one or two of the dip switches to bump it up. And that's pretty much it. All right. As a simple demonstration, I have both these radios keyed to the same frequency. This is plugged into the repeater. The repeater is on. The push button is depressed. And if we key up, we see a little green activity light. That's kind of my voice showing up there. So if I want to turn the repeater on, I would hold this down. That indicator tells me the repeater's on. So if I say Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Okay, there, that's how that functions. And if I wanted to play one of my pre-recorded messages. Now, now I can say my message. This is a pre-recorded message, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Zulu. Locked in. This is a automatic message. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. All right, let me talk at you a little bit more on this bad boy. What do I think of this? Well, I think it has very explicit good use cases. 
I'll give you two off the top of my head. The one we already covered, a couple of friends trying to stay in communication separated by some kind of geographical landmass that they just can't get over without using something like this. In a temporary situation, possibly an emergency, yeah, this makes sense. I think it's fine. Another use case might potentially be like an MCOM event, like Aries or Races, where you don't have a lot of people and you have this setup kind of on its own frequency space. Again, maybe geographically in a good position to be able to reach out a little bit further. Like maybe you have a, a run you're doing and there's a, a some leg of the run, a checkpoint where there's a person sitting, but but they can't really make it in even with a 50 watt VHF mobile radio. This might have a use case of sitting somewhere in between where you're all at and that individual to keep them kind of connected. So that makes sense. I'm sure you can think of lots of reasons why this should this is a thing that exists and, and could be useful. I want you to post them below. I'd like to hear your ideas. Now, to the legality of all this. Well, this is where I am going to say emphatically, I am not a lawyer. <laughs> I am not an FCC person who gives advice in this space. I will tell you my thoughts, and I'm sure there'll be a bunch of armchair lawyers in the, in the uh, comments below, and, and possibly some real lawyers, and you guys help me out with this. So this technically, I believe, in the eyes of the FCC, is not a repeater. Therefore, if it's not a repeater, it technically must be under the operator's control. If it's under your control, then its most advantageous deployment is kind of not possible. Because if you're putting this up on a mountaintop somewhere far from your home or your location, and you're trying to get over to the other side, for instance, well, if you could just be up there, then you don't need this, right? So even, yes, you can put this as an ID tone control. You can set this up to squawk out your call sign so people know, hey, it's it's me, I'm the idiot, I put this up. Uh, that's true, you can do that. Also, a big recommendation is put receive tones turned on on the receive radio. That way, it's only going to squawk back to radios that are set to key or break through the squelch of this radio. If it's just someone talking on simplex, this radio is going to pay no mind to it and just keep on keeping on. But if they've got tone on their transmit, it will open up the squelch on this guy. This will start simplex repeating, and then there you go. Last point, please don't use this on national calling frequencies. <laughs> don't use this on 146.520 or anything like that. It's just liable to piss people off, and then you're going to be that ham when they end up DFing the thing, potentially figuring out who you are. Just don't be that person, okay? That would be my final recommendation. I am not affiliated with any of this. I just think it's cool. I think it does have some fairly defined use cases that make it actually really compelling. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And hey, if you have, uh, if you hate this box and it's affected you in your life, I'd like to hear your stories down in the comments below as well. I will post links to all of this. There's really not that much information, basically anything I gathered, and obviously the links to the Argent systems. It's about $89, again, to repeat, and I did pay for the upgrade about $15 to get them more time uh, to be able to do things like messaging and voicemail box and obviously simplex repeating. I will post links on the side here to other videos I think you should check out. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. See ya. We got a heat wave. It was like 90 degrees uh, today, and I put in some new soft boxes. So how's my lighting? Does my lighting look great? The beginning of the video, no soft boxes. Second half, soft boxes. What do you think? Tell me.